A software engineer spent eight hours daily applying to entry-level coding jobs for six months. She was rejected 357 times before receiving an offer. After working in the restaurant industry for six years, Sophia Chung decided to learn how to code. Well, first of all, how are you spending eight hours a day applying to entry-level coding jobs? I don't understand how you spend your day after you kind of went through your coding bootcamp, but to me, spending eight hours a day is probably not a really efficient way to spend your day when you're trying to get your first job. I would try to break that down into like six hours of coding and two hours of applying because she must be doing something wrong if she spent that much time applying to entry level jobs. I get the grind and I get that you have to apply to a lot of companies, but it sounded like she was probably just spamming a lot of companies by applying through Indeed, maybe, maybe not but let's just keep reading. Um, she applied to entry-level software engineering jobs from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. for six months straight. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty crazy in my opinion. 357 rejections, 40 interviews, and two offers later, she's making more than double her old salary. So she got two offers out of 357. Sophia Chung's career started at a Korean barbecue mm -hmm, where she worked as a host and completed her bachelor's degree in business administration. After graduating from Fullerton, she was promoted to assistant general. Then a coworker started teaching her how to code. Okay. She fell in love. I know it's cliche. It was my passion. Like the millions of Americans who quit during the great resignation, Chung had an opportunity during the pandemic to exit the restaurant industry and switch career paths, something she had been wanting to do for some time with restaurant closures, forcing layoffs. She volunteered to be among those let go. Chung immediately used the money she had saved from her restaurant paychecks to enroll in a 13-week course called Hack Reactor, where she completed over a thousand hours of full stack coding. One week after graduation, she set out on the job hunt. Blind applications. Yeah, I really think it is. I really think it is blind applications. Um, eight hours a day applying, that just makes no sense. I kind of think the story is made up. I'm pretty sure she applied to a lot of jobs, but eight hours does seem kind of excessive. And I do agree, definitely exaggerated. 40 out of 357 isn't the worst. It's the 40 interviews that she wasn't able to seal the deal. That's a red flag. For me. That is also very true, right? Like how do you have 40 interviews and only get two yeses? And maybe some, some of the roles maybe she was applying for was a little above her experience. And that's a very valid argument. But when I work with my clients, I always ask them, even if you fail an interview, you have to learn from those failures, right? You can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and expect a different result. I'm working with a fellow and he had, he's now failed two interviews and he was asking me like, should I quit software development? I was like, no, you did not quit software development after two failed interviews, but you need to learn from that. Like what kind of questions did they ask you? What kind of pressure were you under when you're trying to solve that problem? Like what were the red flags that kind of put you in a situation where your mind went blank? What do you need to prepare for next time? All of these things are super important because you can't just, oh, I failed this interview. So I'm going to go to the next interview and maybe it'll be a little bit different because those people weren't that good or so like those people weren't great interviewers. Like all of that is kind of important here. Like 40 out of 357 isn't bad, I agree, but only two out of 40, something there about it. Monday through Friday, nine to five, she would apply for entry level jobs or internships she could find spanning 18 countries. On top of submitting applications, she reached out to tech recruiters every day, online portfolio. I was pretty naive. I thought I'd have a job after a month because Hack Reactor has such a good reputation. Big, big red flag right here. Your school or coding bootcamp, as great or as bad as it is, at the end of the day is not a golden ticket to say that, hey, I went to this school, now hire me. Coding interviews are one of the hardest experiences that you'll ever get. And the reason why is because they test you on your skills, not on your education. Even people that go through like computer science degrees, they get tested and they're not going to just ask, oh, you know, how do you deal with conflict? And then you and you give some really, really generic answer and they're like, all right, cool. You're hired. If they hire you based on that kind of generic answer, that means that job can be done by anybody. But with coding interviews, it's going to be one of those things where they really, really test your skills. The fact that she said that 
I thought just going to these schools would just get me a job magically. No, not at all. You need to really, really validate and to prove to the hiring manager that you know how to code. Based on that too, it's like maybe she wasn't as prepared for the interviews as she thought. And she spent so much time applying to jobs that maybe she wasn't actually doing well during the interview. So that could be a red flag. Something to think about there. But then one month turned into two months and then three and four. And I started thinking, oh my God, why am I not getting a job? What's wrong with me? Constantly hearing about, uh, this is kind of dumb. I'm just going to skip this. Six months later, Chung had interviewed with 40 employers and had been rejected 357 times by companies big and small. She told Insider that most interviewers asked why she has switched careers and how her experience in the service industry would help her succeed in tech. Every time I would ask them why they didn't continue with me, they'd say the other candidate is more senior than you. That could be true, but maybe they're more senior than you because they solve that technical problem better than you, right? That is a very, very open-ended, very uh, not clear in terms of what the actual feedback was here. And then adding that recruiters, which suggests reaching out in a year if she had more experience. The same week, Chung was supposed to head back to working at the restaurant. She received two job offers. One, a junior software engineering position at Homey would pay 120% more than her previous salary, she said. Which, you know, at the end of the day, as much as I am feeling like I'm critiquing, she got the job and she worked and she hustled. You can't necessarily say what she did was a failure. But I think maybe if she tweaked her strategy just a little bit, she, could, she might have gotten the job a bit faster. Because if you have 40 interviews, I feel like you need to learn from each one and adjust accordingly. Like, what are you doing wrong that, that you can make yourself better the next time, right? Maybe she could have done it within 10 interviews, or maybe she could have done it in 12 interviews, 15, 20, 25. The number keeps going and going, right? Because 40 is a lot. And there must have been something that wasn't working that might have not have been fixed until maybe the 10th or the 20th and whatever. I guess we're all about taking chances with newcomers. Chung said the company's chief CTO said Mitch Pirtle told her during the interview process, we know how hard it is to get your foot in the door. This is super important, everybody. As much as you would like to critique the person that's doing the application process, that's doing the interviews, sometimes you just need to find an employer that's willing to take a chance on you. And secondly, you know how hard it is to get your foot in the door. And that's why more often than not, I say accept the first position if you can, because it makes your life so much easier so so much easier when you get that first job and i've heard some horror stories you know there are people that have rejected their first job offer because of i don't know some weird reason outside of just pure tech and after they rejected it they had this belief that hey i'm going to be able to get a second offer really really quickly and then it becomes one month and then it becomes two months it becomes three months it becomes four months and then you're like holy crap maybe i should have just taken that offer right it's just crazy to think that you rejecting an offer when you have nothing else lined up and thinking that you're just going to get a second one easily is it's crazy to me to think that you can think that because it's just so hard to get that first offer. So, you know, if you can survive with whatever they're offering, because generally with the first role, you might not be making that much money, but I can guarantee you your pay does grow exponentially. Really, really think about just getting your foot in the door first. As she accepted her new position, Chung posted about the strenuous job hunt on LinkedIn. Hundreds of job applicants struggling to find work flooded the comment section asking for advice with similar stories of constant rejections. I know there are shortages just about everywhere, but I feel like there are so many people looking for jobs at the same time. I just don't know why it hasn't balanced out yet. And the reason why it probably hasn't balanced out yet is because there aren't enough skilled junior developers right? Sometimes this is the problem with like coding boot camps, right? When you prioritize scale and scale as in scaling the number of people who graduate, all they care about is graduating as many students as possible. Because at the end of the day, as long as 20% or 30% graduate and find a job, then they make money. I would say there are some more very kind of self-aware boot camps that would say like, hey, let's not be those kind of boot camps where we have overlapping students or where we have a student to teacher ratio of like 100 to 1, right? All of these are red flags if 
for a specific coding bootcamp, if you're noticing like, hey, like where is the priority on the students, right? So even with coding bootcamps, I don't want to say like coding bootcamps are bad or coding bootcamps are good. You just got to find the right one that will kind of put you in a position to succeed. Yes, there are shortages of jobs, but there's just like an overabundance of really meh software engineers. How do we fill in that gap? It's you got to really find the proper roadmap if you're doing a self-taught route or you got to find a good coding bootcamp. You got to find the good material. Otherwise, you're going to just be part of the same group of people that just can't find jobs. I think that was kind of something that I got out of this a little bit. But at the end of the day, she found a job, which I thought, you know, kudos to her. And how long did it take her? She said it took her six months, which is actually pretty fast. I know some people are going to say, well, I expected to get it at two months. I expect to get it at three months. But that's something that I would say that is relatively fast.